when I first started learning how to sing and I wanted to sing better, I was always listening to some of my favorite artists and checking out, you know, how they were singing. And one of the things that I often picked up and noticed about them is that they had this really smooth tone to their voice. Everything sounded so smooth. It sounded so clean. I always wondered, like, you know, what, what is it about that? You know, is it their tone, their natural kind of tone to their voice? Is it the way they're pronouncing things? Is it maybe their, you know, styling of the voice? What, what made it sound so smooth? And so for today, I really wanted to tackle this right on the head and share a way for you to practice and get better with your singing in less than five minutes, but also be able to develop that smoother tone and get some compliments on your voice. And so if this is something that you're interested, keep watching. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Singing Simply Show. My name is Ivan and I'm a voice teacher who is on a mission to help demystify learning how to sing, to make it easy because here's the thing, you're probably frustrated, you're probably confused with a lot of the things that you're seeing on YouTube. And when it comes to learning to sing, I can relate to this, right? There's a lot of information out there and my goal here is to break it down and find a way to explain things to you so that you actually understand and you can actually do it with your singing. And so if this is something that you want to be able to do, I am your guy. And so back to this story, when I was checking out, when I was learning from these singers, when I was studying them, you know, obviously there's a lot of cool things that they were doing, but this idea of smoothness and this idea of sounding smooth, this is actually something I want to tackle with you today because I think it's such a great tool to help you sing better and sound smooth. And it's often quite a quick fix as well. And so what I learned is that when these singers are sounding smooth, they're sounding clean, you know, they sound good, right? One of the biggest reasons is that they're applying a concept called legato. And so this isn't really a new term in music, like it's actually being used a lot, a lot of the time. And basically what this means is it's talking about the smoothness and connectedness to a sound. And so when you are listening to a singer and they sound smooth, they sound clean, a big part of it is that they're applying this term called legato. Now, here's the thing, understanding the definition, knowing the definition does not mean you actually get it. It does not necessarily mean that you can actually apply this to your song. And so for today, really what I want to do is explain it in a way where you actually get it, right? Put it in a way where you can actually understand what's happening when we talk about this term called legato, but then also be able to apply it into your singing. And this is actually a process that I share with my summer clients, you know, clients who are working with me one-on-one -on -one, and we're tackling this over a three month journey. This is one of the concepts that we will tackle because I think this is a great tool to not only make you sound better, right? But it's also a great way to build coordination and stamina in your voice. And so let's actually start here, right? We, we talked about legato. We talked about how it sounds smooth. It sounds connected, but it's quite vague. Like, what does this actually mean? And so I wanted to share maybe a slightly deeper definition. And this is going to be a bit of a funny one. This might be a bit of a quirky one, but I'm sure you're going to understand this. So how I like to explain legato to a lot of my clients, and this is something that I share uh, as part of our three month journey, one of the concepts that we tackle is that if you cut off my head, little quirky kind of explanation here, but if you cut off my head and I didn't have my throat, I didn't have my mouth because they, they kind of shape the sound, right? All you would hear is a little, little, bzzz, little buzz, little buzz in the sound. The vocal folds are kind of vibrating, but you'll get nothing more than a buzz. And the reason why I'm sharing this quirky detail is one of the most important parts of singing legato, sounding smooth, sounding connected, sounding good, is that this buzz never stops which means basically your vocal folds are constantly making sound for that phrase, at least. For that phrase, of course, you need to take a breath for the next one and it stops, but the vocal folds are constantly vibrating. It's not starting, it's not stopping, it's not starting and stopping. It's constantly vibrating. And the reason why I'm talking about the buzz here is one of the misconceptions when it comes to singing legato, especially for beginner singers, and you might be thinking this as well, is that we think articulation is the thing that gives us legato. We think articulation, and I think it can help, right? But you'll notice there were exercises, and I used to teach this as well, talking about like, you know, slurring the words, acting like you're drunk, right? So you say if I was to count to five, right? It'd be more like one, two, three, four, five, and like kind of really slurring the articulation like that. And I, th I think that can really help with the smoothness and connectedness. But what I think is really playing the bigger part of the smoothness and connectedness is the vocal folds never stop buzzing. The sound never stops happening. Because you notice this in different styles of music, like musical theater, 
where the articulation is not really that slow. It's actually quite articulate. They're really, really using the articulators, right? But they're still able to maintain a smooth connected phrasing, right? So what that tells me is it's not just about having slow articulation. That's not what Legato is all about. But if you can keep a constant sound making, the sound keeps buzzing and it never stops, then naturally you get this kind of smoother and more connected sound. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of what's actually happening. Now, of course, you might be asking Ivan, you know, I get it now, I get it, I get it, but how do I actually do it, right? How do I actually do it and apply it to my songs? This is the most important part. And so I wanted to share a little three-step process that I guide my clients through, clients who work with me over a three-month journey. This is some of the things that I will guide them through, right? But I want to share with you a little three-step process to help you find and sound smoother through this idea of legato. And so step one here really is about feeling the buzz, feeling that constant sound making process. Now, a little exercise or idea you can do here is simply hum. And see if you can sustain it, see if you can hold it out a bit. Because when you're holding it out, your voice never stops buzzing. It's constantly buzzing, it's constantly buzzing, it's constantly buzzing. Because what we can do here is we can then apply this to a phrase of a song. So, you know, choose a phrase of your song. I'm going to choose one that I've been working through recently. And what we're going to do here is you're going to hum through a phrase of that song and you never let the buzz stop, right? For example, if I go... Now, there are some words that, you know, kind of repeat on the same notes. And so there'll be a little, mm, 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 I kind of add a bit of emphasis there. But the whole idea is throughout that phrasing, I'm trying to keep the buzzing happening at the same time. Now, something that's not legato would be this. You, you, you see this happen all the time. Like, you know, like when people come work with me for the first session, this is one of the things that I will tackle, right? And you'll notice the sound is starting and stopping and the airflow is hence doing the same thing. And so you really want to be playing around this idea of keeping this constant buzzing, right? Even as you're navigating between different notes, as you're navigating between the phrase. Now, of course, between, you know, the phrases, you can take a breath and reset it, but within the whole time, the sound should keep going because what happens now, step three, is we now open our mouth and we do the same thing. We keep the sound buzzing, almost like a hum, but now that we've introduced the articulation, right, we want to see if we can combine these ideas, a constant buzzing of the sound along with the articulation. Now, for example, hmm, now, notice how, you know, as I was adding articulation, I wasn't necessarily starting and stopping the sound, right? If I you know, added my articulation and I was starting and stopping the sound, it sounded a bit more like this. Now, you know, it might sound okay, but, you know, when you go back to this one, right? All of a sudden, that for me has a lot more feel, it sounds a bit more smooth, it sounds a lot more connected, especially if you put it in the context of a song. So hopefully you guys can hear the difference. Even though I've added articulation, the sound never stops. It's almost like the sound is constantly buzzing in and out. Because here's the thing, most beginners or most people starting off will cut off the sound with the articulation. Every word that they're singing, every word that they're articulating, they'll cut off the sound. And this is going to make it sound more choppy. It's not going to sound as fluid. Now, if you've worked through these three steps, you know, number one, you've found that buzz with a hum. You've then hummed through a phrase of your song and you're still not noticing it sounding as clean as you'd like it to do. A little bonus tip here is slow it down. Just slow everything down. Slow everything down because that's going to give you the, the chance or the time 
to really notice what's happening. Notice what's happening because when it comes to singing, right, singing is a very kinesthetic experience. Noticing what's actually happening, this is going to be one of the fastest ways to improve. Now, for example, if I was to go... When I slow things like that, I get to notice things like where am I really starting and stopping, but also my articulation. Because, you know, as, as you might have realized so far, I'm actually singing this in Mandarin. My Mandarin isn't the best, but when I slow it down, it also gives me time to process how I'm articulating as well. And so here's a little three-step practice routine that you can apply and work through, right, in less than five minutes. It really doesn't take that long. And here's the key. Remember, rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. And explore, right, because... This tip is very simple. It's such a simple tip, but the real benefit here is training it in as a habit. And as you know, with habits, right, they don't just happen overnight. It's something that you develop over time. And so practice this in because the challenge for a lot of singers, especially adult beginners that I work with, is they'll play with an idea. They, they will work on it, but before it even becomes a habit, they'll, they'll drop it and they'll work on something else. Now, what that then means is you're kind of just bouncing between these concepts without really getting it, without really giving it that time to work in. So a little challenge for you is maybe sit down for the next 30 days. Don't absorb so much more content. Don't work on all of these things. Just choose this one idea, legato. See if you can really work it in with this three-step practice routine, this thing that you can do in less than five minutes and see how that changes your voice. And so team, keep at it. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to follow for more wherever you're listening or watching this from. And if you're looking to improve your voice faster, just realize you don't have to do this on your own. This is something that I tackle with my clients day in, day out. This is something that I help them overcome without the stress and also faster, right? If you're trying to work on your voice and you want to get there faster, working with someone who can guide you through this journey is always going to be better. And so if you're interested in working with me, check out the links in the description. I'll drop a link on how you can get connected with me and how you can work with me. So apart from that team, take care and remember you are not your limitations. See you.